Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emily. If you are a returning subscriber, you, friend, are my favorite person and you don't even know it yet. So today I want us to make lunch together. I'm making mashed potatoes and grilled pork. I marinated the pork like four hours ago and this is just how I did it. So the first thing you need is your pork, which is there. These are pork ribs and that's how they look okay the next thing you need is about uh, three or four cloves of garlic and a thumb size of uh, ginger the spices that i'm going to pick from here is oregano i need royco cube just one piece i need the sticks and chops spice got this at kafo the next thing i'm going to pick is um beef and onion stew mix which is that the next thing i'm going to pick is cayenne pepper where the hell are you here is my cayenne pepper next thing i'm going to pick is good old black pepper there you go and last but not least i'm also going to be picking this is a sticks and chops a seasoning the other one was a stick and chops spice so that's salt and that's black pepper i'm also going to be picking this uh, steak sauce i got this at uh, kafo i prefer to put it while i'm cooking instead of when it's already cooked so i'm not sure if you'll find it but if you find it it's really good so last but nowhere near least is uh i'm going to pick apple cider vinegar there you go so now let's marinate the pork so guys the first thing i'm going to do is cut these ribs so that i can uh, get off the excess fat so let me do that it goes back there It's very easy. That's done. Alright, so that's done. Once you're done, I'm going to clean the pork using uh, the apple cider vinegar. A good amount because I'm paranoid like that. So I'm going to let that sit in for like five minutes. So the next step is to mash your garlic and ginger. Make sure that your garlic and ginger is fine is finely mashed all right so that's done i'm just going to pour this out in the sink and then i'll show you the next step so the first step is to put salt to taste all right the next step will be to add one rico cube Just one is enough. This is like um, 400 shillings worth of ribs, okay? The next step will be to put like a pinch of oregano, not too much. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. A 
quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I'm going to add like half a teaspoon of beef and onion stew mix. Like half a teaspoon of the steak and chops spice. Okay, this you can put as you're cooking or during the prep stage, I'm going to add the seasoning. The seasoning is for when you are prepping, okay? These are steak and chops seasoning. This is a steak and chops spice. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is um, that soy sauce, like uh, one and a half tablespoon. So that's good. The next thing I'm going to add is like a tablespoon of the steak sauce. And last, and last but not least, I'm going to add my mashed garlic and ginger. So that's enough. Left out some here. Alright, so so we're going to mix this all together. You can use your hands, but I'm first going to use these before I use my hands. Wait, I forgot. You also need honey. So the last thing I'm going to add to this is this is plain honey and it's almost over. So I'm just going to put all of it there. That was like two tablespoons of honey. you don't put too much so that it doesn't alter the taste of your hand of your ribs all right so we're good to go now i can use my hands to mix all together make sure you don't leave out any parts all right spread the marinade evenly to your pork ribs without leaving any parts okay All right, so I've transferred uh, the pork ribs from here to here because I want these to sit in the fridge for at least four hours. If you can, do it the previous day and let it sit in your fridge overnight. Unfortunately, I was too lazy to do that last night. So I have to do the four hours. It's uh, manageable as well. So let me do that. And then I'll see you in exactly four hours time. So for my mashed potatoes, my method is usually very easy. I just fry my peeled potatoes here in crushed garlic and then I mash them with prestige and two tablespoons of coconut milk. Don't worry, but don't worry, I got you boo. I'm going to show you each and every single step because I'm that girl, I'm your girl that shows you each and every single step. So we're going to start off by crushing the garlic. And I'm using four cloves of garlic. Garlic is exactly the girl that she thinks she is. Right, so I'm just going to place that there and do the same for the rest. All right, so these are my peeled potatoes. And for these potatoes, I'm going to be using like uh, four cloves of garlic. So like I said, I just I'll just fry the potatoes in crushed garlic or grated. I've opted to grate the garlic. 
like that. Okay, do the same for the rest. I do not like the conventional butter and milk to mash my potatoes. I prefer to just mash mine in uh, Prestige Original, not the vanilla one, as well as coconut milk. So now let's fry the potatoes. I prefer to use a bigger sufuria to mash my potatoes because it gives me a better surface area to mash. So that's going to be our sufuria for today. I'm also going to pick just one Royco cube. So I have two tablespoons of oil there as well as uh, the crushed garlic. And then I'm now adding the Royco cube and then stir that the next thing I'm going to add is salt to taste okay don't wait until your garlic is browned enough you can just put your potatoes in the dip Cover that and let it cook for like two minutes. And then once it's uh, semi-cooked, that's when now we're going to add water. So after two minutes, we stir that again. And then you add water the ratio of your potatoes so my potatoes zinafika hapo so unaeka maji yenye inafika hapo all right so that's it and then you cover i'm using a medium high heat and that is uh, perfect so that the potatoes can cook easily and fast so while the potatoes cook we're now going to pick the marinated pork this is how it looks like and I'm just going to show you the next step. So to grill the pork, I'm using the um, function the oven function all round heat with a fan on. This is what it looks like and then I'm going to set time for 30 minutes. right in 250 degrees okay so we're first going to brown the pork and to brown the pork i need butter rosemary and a little bit of oil i'm using this pan although i'd recommend that you use a grilling pan it's just that my pork is too much it won't fit in here okay so that's why i'm using this large pan and it's also suitable for the oven and like my grilling pan which tends to kind of burn so i'm going to pick rosemary i'd recommend you use a uh, dried rosemary not fresh rosemary because uh, dried rosemary has more flavor than fresh rosemary okay the next thing you're going to pick is a uh, butter so this is salted butter that's the butter i'm going to use So I'm going to change the burners so that you can see exactly what's happening, okay? So a tablespoon of butter. Good try. Right, so that's about a tablespoon. I'm going to add more. And 
Then you need like half a teaspoon of rosemary. I'm also going to add like half a teaspoon of the beef and onion stew mix. All right, that's enough. So to ensure that your butter doesn't smoke out, I'd advise you add a little bit of oil. And then you spread that across all together so that uh, your ribs are evenly flavored, okay? All right, so we're going to put in our ribs. So this is just to brown them each side for about three minutes and then after that we're now going to put it in the oven for 20 minutes in 300 degrees. Turn each side after three minutes. So when I say browning, this is what I mean. This is why I first fry it in the pan for three minutes each side so that your pork is browned. I know that's not the correct grammar, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. So once you've browned your pork both sides for three minutes, it's now time to put it in the oven. So I'm going to add the minutes there to like nine more extra minutes but you also have to be very cautious I think even the 11 minutes are uh, just sufficient because if you tend to overcook your pork what happens is that it dries out and it's uh, tastier when it's juicy so let's see I'm just going to check what's gonna happen in the next 10 minutes if it's good to go I think I'll add just uh, four or five minutes instead of the 10 other minutes. I hope you get what I'm saying. Meanwhile, the potatoes are done, so I'm just going to pick uh, Prestige. I use the original one. Do not dare make the mistake of mashing your potatoes with the vanilla one. So this is the one that I use. It's the Prestige, this one. The prestige original one the next thing I'm going to pick is a uh, coconut milk I use this one the royal umbrella coconut milk that's the one that I use so it's now time for me to mash my potatoes usually I don't let the water drain kabisa but when it starts to get thick that's when now you can uh, switch off your cooker and also ensure that your potatoes are well cooked so that it will be easier for you to mash. Okay, so to mash, I'm going to start by adding one tablespoon of uh, the prestige margarine. Okay. And add like one and a half tablespoons of coconut milk guys I promise you this right here is everything is everything and more just try my way try my way and only let testimonies because I promise you this method slaps 
like literally. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and you're done. That is how my potato mash looks like. I'm not really too keen to like over mash it into a puree. So you add an egg and black pepper. No, mine is usually just simple. No milk, no butter, just prestige and coconut milk instead. All right. So let me set that up, and I'm also going to add like two minutes. To my pork and then i'll show you as we remove it from the oven okay right guys so this is the end result it's important to ensure that you don't cover your mashed potatoes while still hot because that alters the taste okay so there is the mashed potatoes and there is the grilled pork and it's now time for my favorite part to taste okay all right guys so i have some leftover kachumbari as well i'm going to add that there that should be enough right guys so that's the end result that is my meal that is my mashed potatoes that's the pork ribs and that's the kachumbari. And now, sweetheart, let's taste. All right, guys, it's now time to taste my meal. This is a meal that requires a knife and a fork. So I'm just going to start off with the pork, okay? Oh my god. Perfect. Alright guys, this was quite the recipe. As you can see, I have one earring left. The other one is somewhere there at the corner. But of course i enjoyed making this meal i hope you enjoyed as well if you have any questions you can ask on the comments down below until then stay safe and don't forget to subscribe if you have it give it a thumbs up if you like bye see you on the next one